Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. It's cold weather in my home in Raleigh, North Carolina, so I'm out in the woods looking at different polypore mushrooms. And so if you're not familiar with uh, the different sort of fruiting body types that you see from fungi, polypores are a really common format that you'll see. And so basically what you can see here is a porous undersurface. That is where the spores come from. And you have a ton of different species of polypores. You know, I have a big old book that is dedicated just to them, but many of them are sort of woody and corky. And so uh, oftentimes when it is cooler weather and the fruiting fungi that are more fleshy are uh, asleep for the year, it's a really good time to observe polypores. And so I want to talk to you about a couple of them that are really common and easy to recognize, but they're also for polypores a little unusual. So this first little fella I was showing you is in the uh, Tremedes genus. So related to the turkey tail mushroom, which is a very common uh, medicinal mushroom that you'll see. But this right here is uh, called the honeycomb polypore. Other, uh, you know, um, common name for it is the hexag hexagonal poured polypore. Uh, but I prefer honeycomb polypore because, well, as you can tell, it's really hard to say the other one. Additionally, uh, you know, this is kind of an unusual type of mushroom room because instead of those small little pores, you have these very wide sort of elongated, uh, you know, sort of polygon shaped uh, interconnecting tissue here. And so that's where the spores come from. But this is in the polyporaceae. So the large collection of, uh, you know, mushroom species that are considered polypores. I want to talk about very briefly the taxonomy of this thing. So uh, the honeycomb polypore is the best name for it. And you'll find it, uh, you know, most times of year, but very frequently in cool weather growing on beach. And so um, if you're not familiar with beech trees, this is like one of my favorite mushroom trees in the southeastern U.S. looks a lot like an elephant uh, and they have these, you know, smooth barked uh, and very um, sort of easy to decompose, uh, you know, dry sticks of wood that fall. And so these neofavilus, these honeycomb polypores really fancy the uh, fallen, you know, sticks of uh, the beech tree. And so, um, if you look in guidebooks, you'll often see Neofavilus alveolaris, the scientific name sort of referred to as uh, honeycomb polypore and oftentimes with sort of a description of uh, orangey hairiness on top. And there's a whole lot of mushroom taxonomy stuff that is kind of beyond my realm of understanding. But the TLDR, you know, on on uh, the honeycomb polypore and the Neofavilus genus in general in North America is that there are a couple at a minimum and maybe more uh, individual genetic clades. And so we have a species that's called Neofavilus americanus. And so like if you go on to iNaturalist, you'll see a lot of observations that look a lot like this labeled that way. And so it's like described as sort of pale growing on, uh, you know, down hardwood and sort of smooth and like Neofavilus aviolaris is more orangey and a little bit hairy on top so but the, the reality is that we have these different unnamed clades that are just basically collections of species that are cryptic that share ancestors and so as best as I could probably guess this belongs to a clade uh, that is basically being studied, stood up from what is called Neofavilus ADD5. And that is for the Adirondacks, and I don't know what the five stands for. But anyway, you know, you have a couple of different um, genetic collections that people are suspicious are, uh, you know, endemic throughout North America. And so a lot will sort of pan out in the next few years, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, I, I guess a year ago, I probably would have said this is Neofavilus americanus or the uh, um, honeycomb polypore. But at this point, I'm like, I won't even go in that direction because uh, at the point at which I'm reading scientific paper abstracts and I'm like ADD5, I think I'm just going to go with it is, uh, you know, a beautiful cold weather mushroom that I can observe when a lot of other fungi are asleep. Uh, the one other thing I do want to highlight here is like a lot of the guidebooks or and, and from that common name, hexa hexagonal poured polypore, in addition to being like 
really tedious and hard to say. Uh, these pores, you can see they're really not hexagons and you see a lot of different sort of sizes. This is a larger fruiting body and some of them are much smaller and the pores are often more like often pentagons, uh, but you get a lot of sort of different shapes, but you, you know, have this sort of uh, rubbery, well, not rubbery, but more, um, you know, flexible, but quirky fruiting body growing on beach very frequently. So that's fun to find in the cold weather. Uh, I guess some people eat it, but usually when I find it, it's, it's very tough. And so, um, you know, and polypores in general are, uh, I don't think there are any that we know to be like horribly non-toxic. The uh, chicken of the woods mushroom, so there's uh, the Latiparous genus, and there's a number of different very popular edible mushrooms in that genus, uh, but some of them like disagree with people and they can have pretty uh, strong um, allergic reactions. But anyway, uh, you know, if you're interested in polypores and polypore edibility, uh, there's a lot of resources that are far more informed than I am. All right, so this is another one that I find all the time in the winter growing in my beach uh, groves, and this is Tremedes betulina. And so um, I showed you a little Tremedes uh, polypore at the very beginning there, that it was white with a very, very small undersurf, you know, uh, sort of pinholes underneath. And Tremedes betulina is kind of unusual. Uh, people call it the guild polypore. So as you can see, it has in some ways almost a similar uh, waffly, wavy, and also very uh, sort of hard and corky fruiting body as this uh, Neofavilus, this little uh, honeycomb dude that I have. But instead, uh, the Tremedes betulina, they're more like rays and they look more like traditional gills on a cap and stem mushroom with gills underneath. And so, uh, however, it is actually a polypore. And so it has the common name guild polypore, which is redonkulous because that is a contradiction in terms. However, so, uh, you know, you have this sort of um, really uh, dry and uh, crusty sort of undersurface typically. And then on top you have a sort of nice and felty and furry, variegated uh, and banded surface. And oftentimes it's sort of this scallop shape. Sometimes you have overlapping, uh, you know, fruiting bodies. From this angle, it can look a lot like turkey tail mushroom. Um, however, if you look underneath, you'll see immediately that you have your sort of gill type uh, pores underneath, but also uh, these fruiting bodies tend to be more pale, tan, light brown in color. Uh, you know, turkey tail is often brown, but it is like usually brown and a very attractive chestnut brown and green. And this time of year when it's cold, it actually is often like a little blue, which is really beautiful. Uh, also the furriness or feltiness of the um, uh, Tremedes betulina is a little bit more pronounced than your turkey tails. And then finally, you often with these mushrooms have more of like a rosette shape and turkey tail, they can do that, but oftentimes they're more like little thin shelves and the thinness is another thing. But the second you, uh, you flip this over, you're like, okay, this is very clearly not a small porous undersurface, but rather a uh, cracked one. So that's all I have time for. I guess in summation, the thing I am the most interested in and will take home with me is this uh, honeycomb polypore because I want to get some more photos of it. I'd love to try to draw it, but also I want to learn a little bit more about, you know, the ins and outs of where this will fall more or less from a scientific perspective. And that's always the limitation of like going out in the field and studying mushrooms as you find them. I very frequently am like, okay, I'm going to look up a few resources that I'm familiar with. I'm going to hop over to iNaturalist, look at a few observations. And when I started to do that, I'm like, mm, this says Neofavilus americanus, but I feel like I heard that that might not be specific or accurate. And so I found myself looking at a couple of, um, you know, scientific paper abstracts, which naturally I want to go a little deeper, but I am very confident that at least at this point, this doesn't have a name beyond the genus name Neofavilus that I would assign to it, but a gorgeous little mushroom. I've been finding it for years. And that's the other thing that's really wonderful about mushrooms is like, I am really familiar with this. I know where to find it. I know what time of year to see it. I have dozens of pictures and I've been sort of growing my appreciation for this little fungus for, you know, what? 
10, 12 years, something like that. However, I still don't have a name for it. And that's just a part of the joy of mycology and the joy of mushroom hunting. So I hope you get uh, the most out of both. Have a wonderful new year and we'll talk again soon.